Okay, I'll make that one o'clock. So, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. Really appreciate you joining us. In this webinar today, we're going to be sharing some things we've done in the past because we're about four or five years into our blended flipped digital learning journey and also share with you what we've done in the last two months as well because things have changed, it's fair to say. So this is entitled Flipped and Blended Approaches, but within this, we're going to be talking about different ways to think about pedagogy in a long-term and sustainable way. And this is followed up with aftercare as well. This isn't just a one-off webinar. We're available to help any of you if you fill in the form, which my colleague Sky will put into the live chat. It's also in the YouTube details as well. Fill in the form to express your interest in getting support and collaboration from us at Basingstoke College of Technology. And we can work with you and help you and your teams and collaborate with you. So our story goes back to about 2015 when I was given a day remission to work with student digital leaders and those eight student digital leaders I trained up on that one day a week. I went into staff rooms and classrooms and led inset days helping everybody to use all sorts of ed tech to improve teaching and learning whether it be using YouTube videos in hair and beauty or whether it be using I don't know, interactive ed puzzles with our sports guys. We helped everybody to use a bit of technology that related to their subject discipline, always led by the pedagogy, always led by the teaching experts, always bearing in mind what the students need and what industry is going to want them to be trained in. That went well. We went from a very low e-confidence college to a college that was having nice things said about it by Ofsted in particular. In 2016, the college backed me to take on two learning technology apprentices, one of which is Sky Gabes, who's in the chat right now. So say hello to Sky, by all means. Now Sky and Charlie come on as learning technologist apprentices. I had a bit of a different job change, it's fair to say. I was went from a lecturer to a digital innovation specialist, which basically means I help people with technology. Our library team was recalibrated to become learning facilitators. Now these facilitators helped us in these independent study zones where every single course, whether it be level three engineering or level two barbering, had one hour of timetabled blended learning in their timetable. Now this meant that our learning facilitators, formerly librarians, looked after these guys as the students logged in, beeped their ID badge into the register and worked using Google Classroom to work independently to develop their digital independent skills and gain criteria for their particular course. Difficult at first, weren't all smooth sailing, I can tell you, but things got better over time. And the way things got better over time was us realizing that we had to have a clear communicative cycle, as it were, between the different people involved. Rather than just buying lo lovely, fancy technology and throwing it at the students, we realized that we had to listen, collaborate, and be constantly conscious of what the industry demands were in their respective subject area. It's constant feedback from the teachers to our digital team, listen to the students, working alongside the learning facilitators who watch the way different students work, this helped enormously. We couldn't just throw expensive technology at them, didn't have the money, it's FE. But we were able to actually work alongside students to listen to them, ask what they want, how they learn, what they want to go on to do, and to actually take examples from their industry and then apply it into their classroom in their blended learning hour. This meant that every single course started to use these different approaches to improve and enhance teaching and learning across the entire course. But starting with that one hour of blended learning, by being patient and understanding, and everybody in our digital team, whether they're student digital leaders or the apprentices Sky and Charlie, they were employed on the basis of their kindness, their empathy, their emotional intelligence. They're nice people. That all comes first, before the fact they're good with technology. This was crucial 
because it meant that we could listen to the students without judgment, without ego, take on the feedback, listen to what they need, also speak to the teachers and speak to people in industry and find out what they need. So if automotive students need to live stream video in order to show how to do a service, then we can help them do that in that blended learning hour. If the engineering students need to learn how to use CAD programs, because that's what industry demands, then that's what they can be doing using tools like Tinkercad. This constant feedback was crucial. And our approach evolved over time, always led by the pedagogy, always. Constantly being open to new ideas and listening to what was needed by industry and always led by the pedagogy, always. That's probably the most important thing I would argue. Now, every single year in the first two weeks, Every single student has a digital induction. Now this helps them get used to the blended and flipped approach in their timetable. Now in this blended learning digital induction, which is the first week, and then it's another hour in the second week, the students get used to using the Google tools like Google Classroom, how to use Drive, how to save in the cloud, how to collaborate together on spreadsheets, how to create a document, how to submit an assignment also how to do different skills like here's some, some art students learning about design using the website method.ac brilliant free design tool here we see dan in the middle there it's his birthday today and i think he's watching hello dan canning i'm um, using tinkercad now engineering and media in particular quite likes that to actually collaborate in real time using 3d tools getting a taste of how to use all these tools in the first two weeks of their digital induction really helped them to grow in confidence in using these tools as a way of accessing teaching and learning just become the norm from that two-week induction or rather the two-hour induction over two weeks we introduce chat groups early to our students as well so they can stay in touch with their peers constantly share ideas share updates talk to each other and this is something that's been really crucial for the communication amongst the teachers and students since COVID-19 we've been doing it for quite a while and most courses have a chat group of space to share, completely safe and secure, attached to their Google accounts. This has been really useful in terms of the mental health and emotional well-being of our students, staying in touch with them, being able to jump into a video call if they choose. But as you well know, a lot of our teenagers do prefer text chat. So this has been really crucial, chat groups in particular, on all courses. In the blended learning hour and across all of our courses, we encourage them to build portfolios websites, blogs, whether it be Aisha from Art on the left here, using Instagram to build an undeniable body of work that she could show to universities in her application to make her place on their course a foregone conclusion. Also, it means the work goes with her beyond the course. It transcends the criteria and becomes something she can be proud of displaying her work on. Ben from Barbering, Bit of a cheeky chappy but in the blended learning session he started to see the point of working using digital tools after some initial pushback by using instagram photographing his work learning about different lighting techniques learning about marketing and advertising and using socials properly learning about the importance of a good digital reputation to make him employable on the right is abby she was a tough cookie she didn't like me at all because i made her do computers but at the end of the year she built this website started to get paid work offered to her at weddings and doing um, horror makeup because her website built on weebly.com showed through photographs and videos how incredibly competent and skilled she was that website went with her beyond the course on many of our courses we encourage live stream debates and discussions and using social media professionally they're using these tools anyway. So we take it as our responsibility at Basing Site College of Technology to train up people how to use these tools well because employers are going to look the way they use socials will help or haunt them forever. Now we want them to have a sandbox as it were to practice these tools. Here we see on the right hand side childcare students. I walked into their blended learning session, there they are in their blended learning zone talking about how social media had ruined their lives. Um, they were doing a communication unit at the time, so I thought, oh, that's quite a good opportunity. So I live streamed it on Periscope, and there they are, 163 people watching, and that got up to about 180 by the end of them talking and articulating, using terminology, 
why social media is not good for people's mental health. And the responses were wonderful. And what was beautiful about this is that it captured it as a video for their assessors to look at. That was a naturally occurring bit of evidence that in their blended learning session came out of a discussion. On the left hand side of the screen, you can see us live streaming to the Enterprise College in Birmingham, Alabama in the States. We've got some quite different views about Donald Trump, gun control, racism, then the students in Basingstoke, Hampshire, United Kingdom. Quite a different perspective indeed. When you ask a question in the classroom, or a question in the classroom, you get the same two or three people put their hands up, I find. But making it a live stream, or putting on a hashtag debate, FE student debate is the one we use, we get different perspectives from people who see things differently. And that different context, that different way of thinking critically and developing communication skills is really important as a 21st century skill. And it's something that we consciously improve in our students. If you want to join in with our students on a live debate, a Twitter discussion, it's not going to be a better time than now to do that. So please get in touch. Let's do a live stream debate. Let's do a hashtag debate. We've got a Facebook student debate group as well. This was great. Um, we can put any juicy topic in there and then people start to debate and argue and talk and all the while being checked by myself and Sky, my colleague, for professionalism. But it's a space to practice these skills before they go into the world and use these tools without having had much practice or guidance. This went so well it actually created a live debate as well in the lecture theatre as you can see on the left hand side there. But giving us space using these tools, these blended approaches, has been really useful for our students in terms of practicing how to use these tools. Making people conscious about things like fake news is really important as well. So here we see some of our creative students who invented a fake rap battle beef between two fictional characters, Lil Cowpole and Huffin Froth, aka Sam James and Henry Frith. They created these characters, we created some fake um, news articles, some fake paparazzi shots, fake social media accounts, just to get people talking about this um, fake um, news, as it were, trying to convince people it was real, trying to get people to reflect and question as to what they see online and is it true, is it real. We managed to get a lot of people at the college actually come around the areas we were recording in thinking there was two rappers from SoundCloud who were recording a music video or having a live rap battle there. Um, they thought it was real. It wasn't. It was fake. It was pretend. It was just a ruse to get people thinking about the way we use these tools. That was really good. It was fun. It was electric, that live um, blended project-based learning approach. Similarly, using tools like Slack completely free tool to have people chat and discuss and debate and here we see some students working on a project sharing videos images and chat of their project for a live tv show that they worked on together having these live projects that are project based for a client or can be visible by people externally makes things more real we find having spaces to chat discuss debate is crucial for these blended and flipped approaches we find we're using lots of interactive whiteboards quite a lot at the moment. Now, this is quite useful for many students who find writing or perhaps speaking a barrier to learning at first. Of course, we build up to that. So sketching, doodling, drawing, ideating, using Jamboard. Here we see in the top left hand corner some creative students creating a mural, a tapestry about LGBTQ rights. Uh, in the bottom left hand corner we see some students track their progress by drawing bars and colouring in their progress on a collaborative Jamboard, a free Google tool. But there's Microsoft Whiteboard and many other tools that you can do this. Having a space for students to have a visual, to track their progress, to doodle and draw and to actually make it their own is really useful. On the right hand side here we see a public services student create her presentation on leadership using Jamboard, which she could screen record and give to her tutor to assess with a little video of her in the corner, much like I'm doing right now. She got a distinction for that. And she was somebody who claimed to dislike and hate presenting. She's got a real natural skill for it and finding the right tool, the right way to help her get access was a wonderful thing indeed.
Now, accessibility is something that's at the key of everything we do, really, making or rather enabling learning for everybody. And we're talking about blended and flipped approaches for level one students, that's people who struggled at GCSE, level two, and level three, and some level four as well. All subjects, not just the techie ones. On the left-hand side here, Vialogs, so dialogues with a V. So Vialogs, love Vialogs, it's really good. Put any video in there, and students can comment, timestamp, ask questions, answer polls pertaining to that topic. There's old Gambino there. That's, that's for you, Mara. In the video for This Is America, a quite a politically charged music video that was tapping into the zeitgeist at the time it came out. Having the public services animal management students, English students, media students, debate and discuss the meaning of different scenes was really rich. And that all happened outside of the lesson. You can give it to them as a link and they can log in and do it as and when they want. That was really useful. But tools like Click View are increasingly popular as well with our students, whereby students can answer multiple choice, open-ended, true or false questions about a video. And then at the end, the teacher gets rich analytics of their engagement. Click View and Vialogs, uh, rather, are really popular with our students. Now, on the right-hand side, we see bcotenglish.com and bcotmaths.com. These are two sites that are freely available for everybody to have a look at for our GCSE research students. They are filled with self-marking quizzes, puzzles, games, test papers, videos of our teachers talking through how to get the top marks on different answers, screencasts of them going through mathematical equations. Rich resource, so please, please have at them. bcotmaths.com, bcotenglish.com. As I say, we're not precious about the things we make. We like sharing stuff. Here we see public services students using collaborative spreadsheets and documents and video chat to work in the operations room. And my colleague Sky actually created the graphic in the top right hand corner there to aid this activity whereby students are given an emergency situation. They have to work in real time, collaborating together while through the walkie talkies and the radio wrist attack, whether it be a natural disaster and the students have to think in real time to problem solve using maps, using Google Earth, using um, chat tools, using collaborative spreadsheets, using different tools while it is being recorded by a webcam in the top corner of the room. It's brilliant. So again, that sort of vivacity and electricity in the room when they're engaged in project based learning that actually uses these blended technological tools. But at the heart of it is the activity, the skills they need to learn communication, critical thinking, collaboration, creativity, problem solving. That's all that really matters. The tech is just an enabler, just a facilitator for that. On the left here, we see one of our lovely motorsports and automotive um, students are working together there to actually create vlogs behind the scenes, um, diaries as it were, of their progress throughout a project getting a car ready for race day. The evidence they managed to create was astonishing. Recording themselves on their device, editing on YouTube editor, and we video, free tools to submit to their teacher. So much more rich than just another document. On the right hand side we see our access to healthcare students. Love the access to healthcare students. Sky works with these guys to help them use podcasts. And many of these guys on our access to healthcare are speakers of um, English their second third fourth language essentially and you know they're incredibly brilliant people but they get you know a bit sensitive sometimes about the fact they're not getting across in the way they want understandable but using podcasting and using voice typing whereby their words can be typed up on the screen they can practice their enunciation their presentation their communication creating a podcast using apps like anchor using voice recorder or using even an online voice recorder right now. Love that tool, it's really good. They could practice, record evidence of themselves debating and discussing about, I think it was Asperger's syndrome, one of the deba debates they were talking about, and mental health in the 21st century. The evidence they created by doing that was just incredible for the external verifier and the standards verifier to see. Here's us using cameras in 
a way to capture evidence at the college as well. So in the top left we see Mark from our Board and Future Skills Centre recording a how-to video of how to actually put together different joints. At the bottom of the screen here we see one of our makeup students working on applying foundation and different techniques having been instructed by her teacher. So she's wearing a body cam to actually capture herself demonstrating techniques. By wearing that and going through the process of showing people how to actually apply a particular technique and to do things in a particular way, the evidence that captures as a video is incredible for the teacher and the external verifier and the standards verifier. So much more rich again than just another document. In the top right hand corner we see another GIF there illustrating how this can be used as a tool for teaching as well as learning or evidencing learning more to the point. We use these tools only for capturing evidence of learning and what was really interesting is that the students actually caught themselves swearing and talking to each other and then one of them was going to the other, okay, shh, stop swearing on camera and you find them, okay, professional mode and then giving their best version of themselves for the camera great evidence. Using GoPros and other tools, even mobile devices to capture evidence is something we're encouraging with all our students and teachers of course. Now using video to capture how-to's, evidence of knowledge, assignment walkthroughs, or in the bottom right hand corner here an English teacher talking through how to get 20 marks on paper one question four, I think it was, the evaluation question. That was viewed about 150 times by students who went back, rewound, paused it, add, added comments underneath so Lee, their teacher, could give them further feedback. That was really useful. We've put them on bcotenglish.com by the way. In the top left hand corner you can see my colleague Sky, who's in the chat right now. Sky when she was an apprentice. Sky was my student by the way. Um, and then Sky became an appre apprentice and now she's my colleague, my peer, a learning technologist. At the college we work alongside our students to become digital leaders and then to progress into our digital team, always listening to our student digital leaders and being led by them as much as by the pedagogy and the industry. Sky captured much of her evidence for her apprenticeship using YouTube. You can see in the top left hand corner that I've made timestamps underneath the video as well. Now the timestamps underneath the video actually show where she's hit particular bits of criteria. So when Sky answers a particular question, I've simply timestamped it underneath. So the 3.1 criteria would have been something like understands clearly how to carry out risk assessments in the workplace. And then I can hyperlink to that bit of the video and it jumps ding, straight to that bit there where Sky can ably demonstrate verbally what she did. Now that was really useful for us in terms of gathering evidence because I know Sky can write beautifully. She's written for the Times and she's really good at it. But communication skills, we wanted to grow and develop even more. And also it was just great to get rich evidence that way. So that was really useful for us. I do that of all the apprentices I work with to build up their communication skills. In the bottom left hand corner, you can see me marking a student's work. It's not just me doing this. I've put my examples on here because I give permission for you to have a look at them. I mark all work now by video or audio because my students listen to it and watch it more is the truth and it saves me time as well. I, do, I mark far quicker that way. We'd love to be able to help you guys use these tools to help you mark um, this way as well to save you time to give you your evenings back. In the top right hand corner is an example of an assignment brief walkthrough. I don't ever tell my students in person what they have to do for an assignment. I record it once as a video using Screencastify or Microsoft Stream or YouTube. YouTube primarily because that's where the students are. And I give it to the students and they can watch it back as many times as they want. That's really useful for me because they can then rewind it and then go back if they're unsure about anything. Uh, this example you're about to see on the screen here, you can see, I really regret choosing red by the way, it's an awful choice, apologies. That's my assignment brief there for a project and I could annotate it have a little video of me in the corner and you can see underneath the students were a little bit unsure about that assignment. I didn't do as good a job as I should have done in writing the brief to be honest. But the students could comment underneath and say I don't know about this Scott or what do you mean about this and then I could answer 
and the whole class could see. I gave them a template in the end to help them because I didn't make it as clear as I should have done. So I put the template in the YouTube comments. That was really useful in terms of reflection for me as a teacher. And I still teach, by the way. I still teach one day a week and always will. It's really important to me that I do that. So these tools, that was viewed 107 times when I took this little video. I've only got 20 students. So it shows you they're going back and revisiting and jumping to the bit they need to see. I can't always be there to answer it in person, but video can. We're using a tool called Century at the moment, which is quite useful for us in terms of, again, saving time for our students. Now, Century self-marks a lot of work for our English and Maths teachers to identify personalised, bespoke pathways as to what they need to study up on. And that informs our teachers what they need to spend time in the classroom working on. So it basically helps us to flip the learning. Students can do this in their own time or in a blended learning session. When they go to the actual physical classroom, remember those days? When they go to the actual physical classroom, they can get that one-to-one -one mentoring human support from their teacher. It focuses on the areas they need to focus on because centuries helped identify what areas they need to focus on improving. And then Lee or Kirsten, whoever it might be, who's their teacher, will be able to spend time with them focusing on that particular area, doing the human part of teaching and learning that can never be replaced. These tools are only that at all to enable good teaching and learning, but they're just tools like pencil and pen, you know, it's all they are. They can be used for good or bad. Now, this is a form. Now you can use Microsoft Forms, Google Forms. What we've been doing recently at the college is doing little checkups on our students. Here's one I give out to my students. Ask them how they're feeling and ask them to answer through emojis because they can't always articulate exactly how they're feeling. And how many hours of sleep they got last night. I've got other questions like how much screen time uh, are you currently doing a day? And that gives me this information. If I get three negative emojis in a row in three every week I do it so three weeks in a row that instantly generates an email to our tutors who are able to then follow it up with that student that's using Microsoft Forms and Google Forms that's what we were doing before now since COVID-19 we've had to adapt like you all have as well and here's how we adapted we sent out a virtual learning questionnaire to find out what our staff needed in terms of kit, in terms of technology, and we basically got a wonderful IT systems team did this. They managed to get all of our tech and to give it out to staff and students. They worked so quickly to get that done. Meanwhile, us, our digital team at the college, were working to come up with research and tests using different tools to help support online learning. We identified Google Meet as a platform to actually carry out video lessons and our leader, Anthony Bravo, role modelled it. He did video briefings for the staff. Digital team and I did one-to-one -one training and staff room visits helping them to use these tools because we realised that lockdown was going to be coming soon. We created a well-being email for all staff to ask any questions, which was a really good idea by the college. And we started to create lots of materials. And these materials we've created, we're happy to share with any of you, by the way. So feel free to request anything. We're literally here to help with that. Please make sure you fill in the form, then we're happy to connect with you. And then we are good to go to support you. But every day, Anthony, our principal, was giving these updates, these video meets, to role model to staff how to do it. We created lots of resources for all of our staff to help them adapt to online remote learning. Now... A lot of our staff are doing it in the class with their actual students, uh, but many of them had to adapt remotely. So constant support from our team was available. In the bottom left hand corner there, you can see old Dave from our construction uh, team. On a Sunday that was, he called me on the Hangouts app, pressed a phone call, and we had a little chat how we could get started for the Monday. So our digital team have worked hard um, over the last two months to give constant support on the phone, um, video calls, going into their classroom and that's something we want to be able to offer you at your institutions as well, support and advice and help 
because it's, it's difficult. Luckily at the college we've got the infrastructure in place to help with our teachers and our learners to facilitate online learning to keep it going. Google Chat staff rooms have been created for staff to share ideas with each other, to talk to each other. We had the resources to quickly send out classroom rules, how-to gifts and videos created by Sky there for staff and students, how to get online, how to access your classroom. These tools are really useful in terms of helping people problem solve and have the tools they needed remotely to do what they needed to do. These walkthrough videos, again, been crucial when, of course, a phone call or a video call is not the best way to do it. Look at my short hair there. Remember those days when we had better hair? Student resources. Now, we created these, or Holly led on this, the wonderful Holly Hunt, giving how-to guidance for students, how to access different resources, well-being, uh, mental health support slides and um, tools and tips are RAP tutors, retention and progression tutors have been excellent. Lots of one-to-one -one support with students, chat groups, video chats, doing virtual scrabble, virtual hangman, just checking in on people. The week, the 23rd of March is when we went completely online and in the students dashboard they all had hyperlinked a link to the actual Google Meet lessons. We had drop-in lessons available for all of our students as well. It's the sort of things I've been up to. This is the wonderful Gemma Westlake from the automotive team. She's excellent. Now here's a post of hers in Google Classroom. She's given them a couple of choices here to actually learn about gear ratios and has given them a YouTube video of how to actually test their knowledge. Then she sends them to a tool called Electude. Now Electude is a wonderful tool for automotive and motorsport, industry verified and really robust, whereby students can access a virtual car and solve problems, carry out services as it were, resolve any issues that have been identified and work to a timer as well as to actually solve a problem. This has been fantastic in terms of helping students think about problem solving using as best we can, of course, remotely the tools, as it were, to actually look at a diagram and to look at um, 3D graphics and animations and GIFs to actually see what they need to do to solve any problems or issues. That's something that's been particularly successful with Automotive, who've been nothing short of outstanding since the lockdown using these tools. The video walkthroughs from teachers like Gemma have been crucial and revisited many times by students just to make sure they're doing what is needed. And of course, if they're unsure, they can ask it or message in the chat as well. And if the teachers are unsure, then our digital team are there to support. Many of our teachers have embraced incredibly inventive ways of capturing evidence. On the right hand side here, we see a hair teacher using TikTok with her students to encourage them to capture evidence of them applying different techniques and plats and so on. On the left hand side, we see Justin Mundy from our hospitality team give a demonstration on how to make, I think it's hoisin pork noodles, which I think he created using Apple Clips. Gave that to his students and asked them to create their version and submit theirs. Submitting work and creating work in this way has been freeing to many of our students and freeing to our staff as well. Again, going beyond just the document as a way to evidence learning. Here we see the incredible Vicky Soans, a course director of teaching and learning, doing a lesson in the early evening there with our teachers and setting them tasks, setting them into go into little small virtual meets or mini meets we call them to work in small breakout groups before coming back into the main classroom to share what they've done. She gives them time as as you can see in the top right hand corner there to carry out a task which is great. It means they've got 15 minutes to go and solve a problem, make a presentation and then come back to the main meet and present their work. A lot of students prefer that you know, or we've found certainly privacy, getting away from the actual 20 people in one space, which can be intimidating for teachers and students. Going out into breakout rooms and then coming back has been a real innovative solution by many of our teachers. Equally, having one-to-ones. Now this is something that very quickly in the first couple of weeks, here's one of my lessons here, um, I found that many of my students needed. Now, Meg, bless her, let me take this um, video 
Meg was having a rough time the first couple of weeks and having the opportunity to jump into a one-to-one -one with me was really crucial for checking on her, keeping her on track, making sure she had everything she needed because she wouldn't have said so publicly in front of 20 people. But in that little sidebar mini meet, I could find out what she needed. And I've been doing that, and many of our teachers have been doing that, every single week now. In fact, 50% of my lessons now are one-to-ones. That's what they need. They crave that interpersonal touch, as it were, because we can't necessarily do that if we're doing full class, sage on a stage broadcasting, like I'm doing right now, ironically. But the one-to-one -one side of things is the most valuable. Anything to facilitate this human interaction. Here's Caroline. Love Caroline Farrow. One of the best teachers I've ever seen. She's excellent. Um, here's some of the feedback she's given us on what she's been doing since we went into lockdown. Her advice is to not be afraid to try new things and embrace the failure side of it. It will go wrong, the things we're doing. Now that is... Caroline Oliver in the sense that she embraces risk and takes chances and is led by what her students are into. Her students were using TikTok, so she used TikTok. Now, the personal side of it is something Caroline also mentions here. The fact that we can actually have those personal connections with our students that we miss, in truth, don't we? Working remotely. Live chats, putting the webcam on, encouraging the learners to as well, if you're role modelling that personal approach. I often share with my students, I've got uh, two kids, I've got a one-year-old and a six-year-old. I tell my stu students that I'm, when I'm struggling, when, when I'm having a rough time, and I try to be as human as possible and encourage them to share as well because it is difficult for all of us. But being there and connecting with each other and supporting each other and providing that, that compassion, that empathy, that emotional intelligence that I mentioned is so important when helping people to use these tools, more so than the technological savvy. That's crucial, and providing that to our students, these tools will help us do that. Facial expression and body language say a lot that cannot be picked up by a text contact. So, says Caroline, and rightly so. This is the wonderful Alice from Beauty Therapy. So good. Alice has been excellent for so long, but she's really come into her own since the lockdown um, with this activity here is indicative of her imagination, really. So getting the students to actually show the understanding of cell structure in the beauty therapy lessons on skin. She got the guys to bake cakes to actually concoct these incredible designs here and illustrate them and annotate them with the vacu vacuole, the uh, centriole, the lysosome. Um, my pronunciation is probably off there, wasn't it? The cell membrane as evidence, photographing it uploading it so truly blended in the sense you've got the physical and the digital coming together there now being open to trying these techniques is something alice has always been and the students give her enormous goodwill for that because some of the things don't always work for me for her for anybody but she tries she puts herself out there and the students think well you know fair enough she's well modeling it so i better walk the walk as well Going back to Anthony, our principal, him doing those Google Meets of him on camera going, right, here I am. Here's a video of my son playing in the garden at home. Okay, here's me sharing my screen. Okay, we're in this together. I'm doing it as well. Role modeling for the students, the correct way to use these digital tools, it's crucial. Sharon. Sharon's been a full, fully qualified teacher only for a couple of years, but one of our greatest teachers when it comes to using different tools pushing out to the students diagrams, people to annotate, using Google Drawings, using Jamboard, using Google Slides, using YouTube, using Q&A tools like Kahoot and Mentimeter as well, and Screencastify, capturing videos of herself talking through what they need to do. That way, Sharon can raise her family while the guys are off doing something, and it flips the learning, puts the incentive onto the students to go and do something rather than being sat there live the whole time doing it. We can use these tools to flip the learning, to get students to go and do something, and then come back and present it in a live section of the lesson. What Sharon says here is that when delivering remotely, you need to remember that you do not need to be perfect. Just as you would have in the classroom, you need to have a mixture of activities online and offline. Yeah, that was online hangman. I saw her doing that with her students. That was a great icebreaker to get them talking and sharing and laughing and feeling like they belong again sharing things on a padlet wall. 
incredible work. These brilliant teachers are keen to collaborate with you all. They've been very active on social media, reaching out to people. Here we see Martha putting out a message on LinkedIn to encourage guest speakers to come into her classrooms, her online classrooms. And sure enough, she has had lots of people come into her classroom and present, whether it be from the police force, whether it be from fire service, talking and sharing best practice with her students. And they're getting this really rich experience from all these people who are making guest appearances in Google Meets in their online lessons each week. That's level two and level three public services. Guest speakers is something we're seeing more and more of across the college. On the left here, we see the incredible Rebecca Starkis um, talking about what her creative faculty or teams rather have been up to. Now, since the announcement that the actual work post lockdown isn't going to be going towards their final grades, we've been actually setting our students on passion projects to work independently to create portfolio and develop skills. In the bottom left hand corner, you can see Kelly from our media makeup course praising her students on the work that they are creating remotely. We see some images there of what they've done remotely and uploaded, which is wonderful. And the bottom, in the middle there, we see Dave Trevelyan, in his second mention in this webinar, reaching out and talking to other people about wanting to collaborate. Fellow construction teachers in particular, Dave is doing incredible work right now using different tools. Right, gone on for quite a while, haven't I? Look at that. It's been 40 minutes. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for stopping by this webinar. I'm just going to have a look at your questions, quite a few of them, blimey, and answer as many as I can. Uh, thank you, John, saying about the levelling out of technology and removing the fear of being perfect. Thank you, John, I appreciate that. Mike, and do you advise staff how to organise their home space for all day online teaching? You know what, Mike, I haven't. Sky, I don't know if you have, but um, that's a really good point. And I haven't actually done that yet. What I've been doing is, the, um, in terms of health and safety, Katrina Heath, who's our health and safety lead, she's been giving people advice, pointers on making sure your eye line is right um, with your monitor, make sure you're sat properly. But yeah, that's a really good point. That's something that I'm going to make a little post-it note reminder for myself now to actually chase up because I think that is something that we could certainly help with. Thank you very much. Mark Anderson, good to see you in the chat. Ty, hello. It is fascinating. Perceived constraints of remote are blown away by the increasing confidence that staff gain from the support and how the personal is vital. The personal is vital, Ty. Me and you know that. We always have a nice little chat and our Twitter direct messages, checking on each other. The human side of it is the bit that people remember, isn't it? In lessons, they're the bits that, when I was a student, I remember. The teachers sat down next to me, talking to me. The human bit. That's the bit I always remember. And that's the bit the students crave. And the one-to-ones we're having in remote learning, they're the bits the students actually are enjoying the most. And the attendance at the college has been like, really good. The stats of which I'm reluctant to say out loud now until I know for certain, but I know our senior management team are very happy with the attendance because the students are getting that regular human social interaction, which is something that is as important as the academic side of things. Kev. Hello, Kev. Good to see you, my friend. Susan, thanks. Oh, that's really nice. Thank you very much. Yeah, please get in touch, guys. If you could please fill in the form for us, um, which is in the YouTube details underneath. And if my colleague Sky can ping it into the chat again, that would be greatly appreciated. Or Ty, if you could pop it into the chat. Sign up to the EdTech Demonstrator um, form and we'll be connected with you. Then we can have lots more chats like this. And I can see you as well then. And we can talk in two directions rather than me just talking at you. Okay, I hope that was useful, everyone. Okay, thank you very much. I'll stay on for a bit longer and answer any questions, but that's it. We are done. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hey, Mark Breeden's there. Mark's my line manager for a few years. He's brilliant. Thank you, Mark. Your guidance, you know, was everything to me. I wasn't a manager until I met Mark, and Mark was, um, yeah crucial to everything we're now sharing with you. So thank you, Mark, who's now Abingdon and Whitney doing excellent work there as well.
Uh, Deb Miller. Oh, thank you, Deb. Students love the people, not necessarily the subject. <laughs> that's good. It is the teacher human that make is that's what comes across with you lot of Grimsby, you know. Um, it's the fact you always talk about the staff by their first name, and you um, and you have really great anecdotes about the um, connections with the students. And uh, yeah, if we're in the same conversation as Grimsby, when people talk about people using EdTech well, then that makes me really happy. Um, inspirational David Mills. Thank you, David Mills. That's really kind of you, mate. Uh, Amy. Hello, Amy. You stayed right to the end, did you? Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, Laura. Hello, Laura. Good to see you. Uh, Nancy. Hello, Nancy. Lovely. Thank you, Sky, for keeping everyone chatting along there in the q and A. I'll go back and have a look at the messages in a bit. Fantastic. I appreciate you all stopping by.